All right, gang, just picked up an electric dryer that won't heat. This is a Samsung, which you know my feelings about those. They're junk. Case in point, this isn't working. So let's tear into it, see what's going on. All right, here's where the heating element lives. It's a coil back in there. You'll see it in a minute, but I figure we'll start with that. It's in all likelihood if it's not heating, we probably have something wrong with our heating coil. It's probably burnt out. Could be an electrical issue somewhere else, but no harm in inspecting the coil, which is, again, I think it's our most likely culprit. So there's a screw right there. And then this will just pop off of this mounting plate and slide forward, but then it gets jammed up right here. So I'm gonna remove this whole bracket below it to give me some more room. There's two screws on the front, and I'm sure there's two screws on the back that I'm gonna have to try and reach blind. All right, well, I got off the front two screws, and it I couldn't feel any in the back, so hopefully I'll be in luck. This just slides off. Hopefully I'll be in luck, and this piece will just lift out. Yeah, okay, you have to tip it backwards, but then it lifts out. It just had these two tabs holding it on in the back. Nice. Thank you, Samsung. And here's your heating element, and it's got a couple of connectors over here that I'm gonna have to disconnect. Let me get this guy out of my way. Put this up here. And now, just remember where things go. I've got a blue wire connecting up to the, no, you can't see that. Let me, that's better. Okay, so there's a blue wire coming up to the top. A red wire at the bottom and then oh great I've got another blue wire but it's a jumper wire so this little wire the short little wire is just a jumper from the uh, the front piece to the back piece so actually I could leave that on but I guess it's taped so I'll take it off okay and then I've got a black wire down here Going to the bottom of this, looks like some kind of thermostat. Okay, but the front part's all off now. And in the back, again, we've got another jumper wire and then another blue wire. So the black wire is now a jumper wire, so this is super fun. And... Okay, this is... A, we've got a blue wire up here. Normally I'd take pictures of these things, but I've got this video as evidence, so I'll just scroll back through this when I'm going to replace it. Okay, here's my heating element. You can see the windings in there, and it connects back there to that inlet, and that's where the, the hot air gets sent that goes into the back of the drum through here. All right, let me start to take this thing apart and get a better look at it. Before I take this clamshell apart and actually look at the coils inside, let me do a more obvious or a little easier of a test. See if you can see that. So just set your multimeter to ohms or resistance, continuity, whatever you want to call it, and test between these two leads. And you can't see my voltmeter. There we go and you should have some kind of continuity. So it should read something other than, this is an old voltmeter, so instead of saying out of limits, it just says one uh, with no decimals after it. So I am not getting any kind of continuity. If I had continuity, it would show me the number of ohms. I don't, so it's testing wide open. So somewhere um, inside this clamshell, my coil has a break in it or a burnout. Same thing, so now, I know in all likelihood it's none of these sensors that need to be replaced, it's just the main coil. Now I'll take it apart and see where it blew out. With all the screws removed, let's see what it looks like inside. Oh, right there. So just burned right through. 
we've lost this little section of coil. So it might have other brakes, but it only takes, oh, there's another brake. So at least two brakes. This thing is completely disconnected, this one is. Looks like we got a, maybe a brake in there. So, fried through completely. So we're gonna need to get a new one of these inserts. Chances are I'm gonna have to buy this big heater unit, but all I really need replacing, all it looks like is this internal heating element that sits inside this clamshell. I shouldn't have to replace either of these two sensors along with it. It could be that they're bad. I will test them, but usually only one thing fails at a time. It's pretty rare for multiple components to, file, to fail simultaneously, unless one's failure causes failure of the other, but that shouldn't be the case here. So hopefully I can just buy this heating element and replace it by itself within this clamshell. Let's see. All right, I went online and found that I was able to replace just the heating element and I didn't have to buy the entire shroud assembly. With the magic of video, it's already arrived. And you can see that it's got the same part number as the previous one, so I know it's the right fit. It also looks like it just matches up pretty perfectly, which is great. Also, it comes with all these different sensors, so I don't have to test sensors and see if any one of the sensors is bad. I just get to replace them all. And I'm not sure if these two have a place yet. We'll find out in a moment. These two definitely replace this sensor here and the sensor right here. So I'll swap that out now and then I'll put the whole rest of the shroud together. This internal heating element and the four sensors that it came with were $25, so not too bad. Okay, right, old. And new, 260 to 50, 260 to 50. It's all done, clean this lint out of here. It's pretty gross. Got a new one. Set it in here, and it shouldn't matter which way these go, whether, sorry. I've got these two leads. It shouldn't matter which one goes where, but I'm gonna put the bottom one on the bottom and the top one on the top. Because it just makes everything right with the world. And they're less likely to arc into each other if the one on top stays on the top rather than dipping down below. So there we go. That should be all there is to that. And we'll put the top back on. Just like this. A slight amount of lining things up here. We'll start with just one screw, like so. And then we'll get one in. That one actually just put the clamshell together. It didn't do anything to align the tabs between the outer bits of the clamshell and the heating element in the middle. This one goes through all three layers. And 
and now we'll repeat that for the other six screws. And then we've got these two back here. And then I've got to put the screw in there and the screw in there to align those sensors. And then we'll be done reassembling the heating element. All right, here it is all finished. And I misspoke earlier. I said there were six screws. Uh, there was only one here, one here, and one in each of those locations before. So you don't have to put a screw in every single one of these holes. I'm not sure what all of these are for. But so I'll put back together now and you can see the heating element inside. Make sure when you're finished with this that you haven't bent anything and that the heating element that is this wound up metal coil isn't touching anything. Uh, that includes the center plate and that includes the sides of the clamshell. Also make sure that on this side where they're coming out that these end leads don't touch each other or anything else. And then you should be good to go. And when we go to put this back in here, to remember that the way we took it out, we had this in here first. And with it in there, we have this bracket. Because once you install the bracket, there's it kind of clogs up this entryway and there's no room to put the heating element back in there. So you have to put the heating element in and then put the bracket in once the heating element's kind of in there and back out of the way. Bracket's on its side. Now we have a little bit of room to slide this assembly back out. And we're sliding it back out so that we can reach all the plugs and connect the wires in. Some of them are way back there. So here's the furthest place back that we're gonna to have to connect to. So we'll connect that now. Okay, I hooked all the wires back up and it was a little bit of a pain, so I spared you me going back and forth and getting confused and re-reviewing my video from earlier to make sure that I got the wiring correct and I'll just show you the final state. So there's only one red wire. It comes into the bottom of the heating element. We've got a blue wire that's actually a jumper that comes out of the top and connects to the top of this, let's call it a temperature sensor. And then there's a black jumper wire that comes out of the bottom of that one and connects to the bottom of the sensor back here. And then we've got one final blue wire that goes back into the housing that connects to the top of this sensor back here. And that's the way the whole thing hooks back up. And now we'll slide it all back into place and put our mount in place. So this can move back here. It's going to take a little bit of maneuvering. Make sure you don't pinch any wires or knock off anything that you had just installed. This will have to lift up at the end to go into that housing in the very back. That duct work in the back of the heater, in the back of the dryer. For the moment, I'm going to push it out of the way. Push these two tabs in there. And there's a tab. See that right here. You can just barely see it. It's a thin strip of metal that has to go into a slot in the top of this mounting bracket. So make sure that that aligns or it won't slide down. And there we go. So now that's aligned. I want to line up this bolt hole. And there's our mounting bracket. Now I'll just screw it all into place. One final thing with the heating element reinstalled, make sure you reconnect this connector right there. All right, and that's it, gang. Works perfectly now. Just tested it, gets nice and hot really quickly. So, pretty simple fix. And that's about when it comes to dryers, when they don't heat, an electric dryer is the worst one because it's more likely to be expensive. That replacement part was $25, as I mentioned earlier, and that includes the sensors. Nice little project to get into. If you wanted, you could do a couple of these a week. People are always getting rid of old washers and dryers. And I never pay more than, they're either free or maybe 60, maybe a hundred dollars if it's a really nice one. This is not a really nice one. This one, usually I can sell washers or dryers for 
350 standard price that I asked for the modern ones that are front loaders like this. This one, it's Samsung. Like I said, I don't think they're great. They will probably sell this for 250 and I paid $40 for this dryer, fixed it for another 25. So I'm into it $65. If I sell it for 250, I made 200 bucks and it took me including driving to go get it and bring it back here, fixing it, filming it. I probably put an hour total into doing this. So uh, 200 bucks in an hour, not too bad. Anyway, good way to start getting into projects without risking any capital. If that's what you're interested in doing, hope you liked the video. Talk to you again soon.